Okay. Opinion. I am a part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Let's fucking look at this dumbass article. Um, I don't know. I, I, I can't wait. Like, I, I, I haven't looked into this yet. Like, I haven't seen what kind of reaction this has created. Uh, this has had on Twitter. But I'm assuming, given the fact that liberals, for the most part, are so excited to fucking welcome people like Jeff Flake or welcome people like Bob Corker and, and, and Bill Crystal and these other disgusting war criminals like the architects of the Iraq war into their ranks of the hashtag resistance that I'm sure um, th these liberals are like, oh man, there you go. Bipartisanship, baby. Fucking love it. Love this shit. Um, you know, so that's, that's what this is. That's, I assume that's what this essay is about. If we're being honest. Um, so that's, that's why I have a, a, a negative taste in my mouth when it comes to this, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, this sort of civility and compromise based bullshit that these Republicans that are working in the Trump administration are actually, you know, it's almost like a veiled threat. They're like, they're, it could be much worse actually overall. Like you're lucky we're there. We're, you're lucky we're fucking holding Trump back, dude. He would be, he'd be white nationalist. He'd just be, you know, He'd just be executing black people on sight, dude. If we weren't there to hold him back, dude. You know, that's that's basically what usually that's basically what these articles are. Um Yeah, just be thankful, liberals, dude. Like otherwise we'd just be like you know, we just be passing uh tax cuts and 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 uh, nuking social security and stuff, but like but like Luckily, we're there so that he can't get away with like all of the racist stuff. He can get away with all the racist stuff like, you know, 48% of the time rather than. I'm so, so outraged that I have like a, like a my neck is hurting. Um. Anyway, okay. So. The times today. Uh, I already read this part. Do you guys want me to do this again? Do you guys want me to read this from the top again? Because uh, on, on Facebook, I did this part already. I do need a massage. I need a massage. Um, okay, you missed it. All right, let's, let's do it. Let's start from the top. The Times today is taking the rare step of publishing an anonymous op-ed essay. We have done so at the request of the author, a senior official in the Trump administration whose identity is known to us and whose job would be jeopardized by its disclosure. We believe publishing this essay anonymously is the only way to deliver an important perspective to our readers. We invite you to submit a question about the essay or our vetting process here. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, the GIF. Oh, he, hey. Her little daisy ship. Very good. Y you spotted that? I was like, I, I, I glanced past it. And you're right. It's, uh, it's, it's these Republican men and women holding America by, by this string, you know? Like, as if this isn't fucking, as if Trump hasn't completely demonstrated that this shit basically runs on autopilot. Yes, I say GIF instead of GIF. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Let's move past that, please. Oh my God, I don't want to have a debate over that. <laughs> we've already, we've already uh, made concessions here. Saudi Arabian war crimes justified. It's GIF and it's GIF at the same time. Okay. President Trump is facing a test to his presidency, unlike any faced by a modern American leader. It's not just that the special counsel looms large. That has happened before. Or that the country is bitterly divided over Mr. Trump's leadership. That has also happened before. Or even that his party might well lose the House to an opposition hell-bent hell on his downfall. The dilemma, which he does not fully grasp. Ooh, a dig at Donald Trump. Love it, sis. Loving the tea. Snatch my fucking wig, dude. Snatch my wig, bitch is that many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. Okay. I would know. I am one of them. Dun, dun, dun. To be clear, 
Ours is not the popular, in air quotes, resistance of the left. We want the administration to succeed and think that many of its policies have already made America safer and more prosperous. You know, like separating children at the border from their families. We've been we've been able to we've been able to facilitate uh, security by by being by playing Nazi um, at the borders by 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 telling uh, parents that we're just gonna go and by CBP uh, people coming up to parents and telling them like look legal asylum seekers telling them look uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna take your child to the shower we need to we need to bathe them and then separating them for months on end which by the way is torture just so you guys understand that clearly safer. We have made America safer and more prosperous. So we've also made America uh, 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 more prosperous with, with massive, massive comprehensive tax reform. Of course. Of course. America fucking, dude, dude, so much safer, so much more prosperous. Like, I can't think what would have made America more prosperous. A, a, a dipshit who ran on, on uh, talking about and criticizing the crumbling infrastructure of the United States. Then who then turned around and was like, oh, yeah, we're just going to give massive, gigantic tax cuts. Anyway, yes, I did see the child that died due to the negligence. No, those van van. I don't want to hear any dissenting opinion. OK, this is basically the same as the first strike policy. Those children were all they were all coming to kill us. They were all going to do that and, and they were going to rape our daughters we had that we had to separate them yeah but we believe our first duty is to this country and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic that is why many trump appointees have vowed to do what we can to preserve our democratic institutions while thwarting Mr. Trump's more misguided impulses until he is out of office. I'm already triggered. I I'm done. <laughs> so silly. What a what a silly bitch of an article this is. Um, the, 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 whenever so one of my trigger words is is preserving our democratic institutions. It is the ultimate. It is the ultimate, how dare you, sir, statement, okay? It, it, it's the ultimate, like, we're going to preserve our democratic institutions. Fuck off. Our democratic institutions have brought us to this fucking catastrophic mess to begin with. Whenever someone says, we need to maintain civility, or we need to go back to a time when we could arrive at bipartisan compromise, or when someone says, we need to preserve our democratic institutions, know that this person is lying to you, okay? Or he's coming at it from a place of, of naivete because they have supreme amounts of privilege. Okay? It's just so, it's so stupid. I'm sure it triggered Trump because Trump is a doo-doo boy. Everything triggers him. The root of the problem is the president's amorality. Anyone who works with him knows he is not moored by to any discernible first principles that guide his decision making. Oh, sick. We knew that already. Nothing of that is, is new. He's impulsive. He's narcissistic. He doesn't give a shit about anyone. He has no guiding principle. He has no philosophy. Republicans have been able to effectively uh, game it so that he could just push the most uh, most rigid uh, and, and staunch, the most fucking staunchest of conservative agendas, obviously. Um, similar to how he put, he just went to the federal, like a great example, Kavanaugh, right? Trump doesn't have a fucking opinion on who he should pick as a Supreme Court justice. That's why he went to the fucking Federalist Society and was like, give me 25 names. I don't care. Whatever you want. Uh, just make sure, you know, I keep saying I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm pro-life. So, you know, give me a pro-life candidate. We're pro-life. Although he was elected as a Republican, the president shows little affinity for ideals long espoused by conservatives. <laughs> free minds, free markets, and free people. The fuck? Just... Uh, what? Where are the conservatives that espouse the, the free market and, and free mind and free people principles? Q. 
Can you just please explain that to me? Can you find me one fucking conservative that's not Gary Johnson? Like, where are these free everybody conservatives? Because it seems to me like the the ridiculous uh, war on drugs, um, the ridiculous uh, civil liberties not afforded to, to members of the LGBT community, those are all... Uh, those were all policies pushed on by by principled conservatives who supposedly believe in free minds and free markets. Uh, same with like government subsidies, for example, for for dying industries, government subsidies for dying industries like the fossil fuel industry. It's just so weird that they're like. I mean, where are these principled conservatives? Because Donald Trump just seems to me like a regular conservative. He's just, you know, he's just bad at he, I mean, or very good, depending on what your perspective is. <sighs> anyway, let's get back. Let's get back into it, guys. Sorry about that. Sorry, I took a little sidetrack there. I was a little sidetracked. Mobby, let's keep going. At best, he has invoked these ideals in scripted settings. At, ver at worst, he has attacked them outright. Like, what the... In addition to this, oh, Jesus Christ! In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press in the, is the enemy of the people, a concept that, by the way, again, real Republicans created. Do you guys remember a very famous hot mommy by the name of Sarah Palin? You remember the Tea Party? That's where the fucking anti-media sentiment arrived. I mean, it came from at first. I'm just saying, like. The, the whole like notion that press is the enemy of the people was Donald Trump's uh, creation is absolute fucking bullshit. Absolute bullshit. It's again, it's this, it's this idea that everything, our, all of our problems started with Trump and all of our problems will end with Trump. It's just a way for liberals and conservatives to make themselves feel better. That's literally what this is. In addition to his mass marketing of the notion that the press is the enemy of the people, President Trump's impulses are generally anti-trade and anti-democratic. Oh, this I will say, by the way, the anti-trade stuff is true. As you remember, all of the all of the anti-trade things. What was his fucking name, dude? Like Cohn, I think, right? Was Cohn the one who um, resigned after? Uh... You guys remember Gary Cohn, who fucking didn't resign. Uh, after the relentless like anti-semitic slurs that were hurled his way everyone from Breitbart to every other populist publication was calling him a Jew in in air quotes like they were just fucking saying that he was a he was a globalist which is a coded way to say um, you know Jews control the world or Jews control the media or whatever the fuck kind of racist Nazi fascist propaganda it was at the time he didn't resign because of that he didn't resign when Donald Trump was like, oh, by the way, the Nazis, some of them were very fine people. Gary Cohn was like, nah, dude, that's good. Gary Cohn fucking resigned when the president struck, when, when, when fucking the president started to talk about tariffs, dude. That's why Gary Cohn resigned. Are you fucking kidding me? Like this whole, so yeah, that is the one element that is, there is a, there is a element of truth here. Trump's impulses are generally anti-trade and anti-democratic. So uh, the, that the anti-democratic part, they don't give a shit about, okay? But when it comes to Cone, or when it comes to actual principled Republicans, like even Mitch McConnell, you guys remember Mitch McConnell? You know Mitch McConnell, that fucking turtle piece of shit. He was also very critical of Trump's policies when it comes to trade because, again, it's hurting their constituents. So when it comes to that sort of shit, they're fully against Trump. That's the only time you'll ever hear them say anything about Donald Trump that's real, like any sort of real criticism. Don't get me wrong, there are bright spots that the near ceaseless negative coverage of the administration fails to capture. Effective deregulation, historic tax reform, a more robust military, and more. You have attacked me and lied. Yeah, exactly. That's literally, uh, of course, of course. Of course he feels this way. Of course he thinks deregulation is good fucking republican like ridiculous no like that's what i'm saying dude that, that that's the whole point like all of this like all of this outrage is largely performative on behalf of republicans like the, the, the any sort of outrage that you hear 
from Republicans about Donald Trump, performative. Bullshit. Fucking bullshit. They love it. They love everything. And then on top of that, on top of everything that Donald Trump is doing, he's also owning the libs. He's got us fucking freaking out. He's got us putting on pussy hats and screaming on the streets. That's in- incredible. You, it doesn't get any better than that for Republicans. That's why he has a 90% approval rating. Yeah, this article is literally Jeff Flake the article. It's it's being critical of everything. It's being critical of Trump while being supportive of everything he's done thus far, which is exactly what Republicans do, which is exactly why we're so fucking we're 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 so excited to to we're so excited to welcome these Republicans into our ranks. We're so excited to be like, oh my God, John McCain, a, a beautiful man, a beautiful soul, a representative of civility, a representative of teamwork. It's fucking bullshit. That teamwork should terrify you. As an average American citizen, that teamwork just means the oligarchs are getting together and taking your money, bitch. That's what that means. Anyway. But these successes have come despite, not because of, the president's leadership style, which is I don't even know how to read that word. Impe- impetuous, adversarial, petty, and ineffective. Yeah, that's wrong as well. Wrong. Um, but these successes have come despite, not because of, the president's uh, leadership style. From the White House to executive branch departments and agencies, senior officials will privately admit their daily disbelief at the commander-in-chief's comments and actions. Most are working to insulate their operations from his whims. Okay. Exactly. This is exactly what I mean. They're like, uh, first of all, all of the fucking executive branch departments and agencies, all of the senior officials, they love this shit, okay? Their entire job is to destroy the federal agencies from within. You understand that, right? I mean, look at fucking Scott Pruitt for, uh, as, as a perfect example. Look at, uh, what's his name? The dipshit they put in charge of the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau. Like, these guys, uh, these guys are put into these positions of power to destroy these institutions. I hope you understand that. So when they say like, oh, they're in disbelief privately. Yeah, it's in disbelief where they're like, yo, did you fucking hear what Trump said? That's what that is. Also, by the way, Shinogi, thank you so much for subscribing with a tier one sub for the third month in a row. I, I, I did not forget you. I was just in the groove of things. I just want to make sure, uh, you know, you're there. Um. So that's what it is. It's it's just it's just uh, performative. Like oh my god. Oh lady, thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing as well for the third month. I guess I didn't see your notification, um, but in, in any case, it doesn't matter. Um, but but that that's what this is. It's like oh, did you hear what Trump said? Can't believe it, dude. That's crazy. Let's go about our daily lives and continue this this insanely uh, horrific uh, Republican agenda. You have attacked me. Thank you, Vague Keep. Uh, wait, who? Thank you, CHB Phone 55. CHB Phone 55 for subscribing with a tier one. I mean, with a Twitch Prime. Um, although he was elected as a Republican, the uh, Free Minds, da da da. Where the fuck was I? Um, okay, most are going to insulate the operations from his whims. Meeting with him, meetings with him veer off topic and off the rails. He engages in repetitive rants, and his impulsiveness results in half-baked, ill-informed, and occasionally reckless decisions that have to be walked back. Like, none of this were what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven paragraphs, eight, eight paragraphs into this fucking article, and I haven't seen a single thing that is new information. Why the fuck did you write this, dude? Why did you write this article? Why did the New York Times allow this article to be written? There is not a single thing this is a response to the shitty article. Okay, Van, thank you for sending me that. I'll take a look at it. Um, like, uh, like what? Why? Why did this person write this article to, to to tell us everything we already knew? To make himself eventually like you know once his name is revealed to be like oh yeah I am the resistance hero. MSNBC, would you like to pay me five grand uh, every week for so so I can attend all of your fucking Rachel Maddow uh, specials and talk about how on top of everything else Trump is also a Russian agent? Like, that's what this is. This is a person who, who, who already has his cake, and, and, he, and he's eating it too. But then on top of that, he wants you to fucking celebrate him for eating his cake while you're eating breadcrumbs on the streets. That's what that is. This motherfucker made an active choice to be in the Trump administration. 
is, is raking it in, has developed and secured those relationships, and then on top of that, is it wants you to celebrate him for for working alongside Trump. That's literally that. That's literally what this is. Fuck this guy. Meetings with him veer off topic and off the rails. Yeah, we know. We know, bitch. There's literally no telling uh, whether he might change his mind from one minute to the next. A top official complained to me recently, exasperated by an Oval Office meeting in which the president flip-flopped on a major policy decision he'd made only a week earlier. Well, we have access to his Twitter, so we know that. Like, we know literally everything you're saying to us right now. So... The erratic behavior would be more concerning if it weren't for unsung heroes in and around the White House. Some of his aides have been cast as villains by the media, but in private, they have gone to great lengths to keep bad decisions contained in the West Wing, though they are clearly not always successful. Yeah, fuck that. I, I know who he's referring to. He's referring to John Kelly. Or maybe he's referring to himself. Fuck John Kelly, okay? Like, let me tell you something. This motherfucker, or, or, or like, who, who could you be referring to? Like, what, Stephen Miller? Like, is he... <laughs> Is he is he really is he dialing him in? Is, is Stephen Miller like saying, "Listen, Mr. Trump, sir, like, I know you advocated for like literally executing all the people at the border, but um, you know, maybe we should just uh, lock them up in cages instead." So stupid, so fucking stupid. Thank you, Stans Juliana, for subscribing with the Twitch Prime. Um, yeah. Some of his aides have been cast as villains by the media, but in private, they go through great lengths, guys. Great lengths, okay? Like, they are the real victims here, okay? Not you, the American citizen who is devastated by the outcomes of these fucking erratic policy decisions, but the ones who decided to work with the proto-fascists. It's not fucking Hitler's fault, you guys. I mean, it's, it's Hitler's fault. Everything is Hitler's fault. It's not like, you know, Himmler didn't have anything. Goebbels, no, innocent, dude. Everybody else is innocent, just Hitler. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. It may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know that there are adults in the room. I hate this. I hate this article more than I hate Donald Trump. I hate people that think like this. Because this person, this person absolutely thinks he's, he's doing the right thing. Or worst of all, this person wants you to think he's doing the fucking right thing when all evidence points to the fact that he's not doing the right thing at all. What the fuck do you mean there are adults in the room? Okay, so, so what? You're still doing horrific shit. We fully recognize what is happening, and we're trying to do what's right, even when Donald Trump won't. Like, he already... All right, what's your semi-hot take, Obo the Hobo? Let's hear it. No, I'm, I'm saying, like, that's the joke. The result is a two-track presidency. Take foreign policy in public and in private. President Trump shows a preference for autocrats and dictators, such as President Vladimir Putin. Oh, here we go. Trigger, trigger word for for like this is all this is all marketing for his upcoming book, dude. This is all. Trump did nothing wrong. Hot take. I love that. I love that. Owned, wrecked. Gulcifer, wrecked, dude. This is so clearly begging the public to consider the support of the 25th. If this president is removed by Mueller, he'll get all of them. The rest of the senior staff is begging for the 25th before they all end up in jail. Yeah, probably. My hot take to that is they should go to jail. <laughs> like, literally. My hot take is that we should be jailing most of the politicians. If we lived in a truly just world, we would fucking level the American political system right now and change everything. I didn't say guillotines. You know what I mean. <laughs> like, like I love... The reason why I love the fucking Mueller investigation, the reason why I love it, and I do, I do love it, not in like a, oh my God, Mueller is the thick daddy that I want to fuck my mom kind of way, which is like the normal neoliberal position. But the reason why I love Mueller is because he is genuinely, he is a good prosecutor, right? And, and like, he's a diligent prosecutor. And that's right. That's right, Gulsfer. I did not say guillotines. Yeah. Um, anyway, the reason why I love this shit, the Mueller thing is because, uh, 
the the reason why I love the Mueller investigation is because like if you take a look, if you scratch the fucking surface of these of these like international lobbyists and all of them, like literally all of them, okay? If you even scratch the surface, you're going to find so much horrific bullshit that normally is never considered a crime. That's precisely why I like Tony Podesta also uh, was a part of the was a part of the prosecution. Like Tony Podesta also got indicted and then they gave I think they, I believe they gave him immunity afterwards. You know, Tony Podesta John Podesta's brother, one of the architects of what happened in fucking uh, Libya, you know, that guy, he was also found guilty, he works in the same fucking, uh, he, he, he works alongside uh, Paul Manafort, so what's up, all I'm saying is, if they, <laughs> we need to stop the lolly lule low, all I'm saying is, if, if we looked into uh, if we looked into every single person, if we looked into every single administration member, we would find exactly the same amount of horrible bullshit uh, that 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 uh, Paul Manafort and others were were uh, indicted on, and they would all have to go to jail, which would be great overall. That's what I'm saying. Anyway. Maybe. I don't want to listen to the fight song here. <sighs> yeah, so, yeah, he's saying, like, oh, no, he, he loves Russia, guys. He loves he loves Russia, liberals. Y y you hear me? He loves Russia. I hate that about him. Plays little genuine appreciation for the ties that bind us to allied, like-minded nations. Like, what fucking ties does the U.S. have to allies and like-minded nations with the exception of Israel and Saudi Arabia? Honestly, explain that to me. What other, what other fucking genuine uh, allegiances do we have worldwide? We don't care about anyone. That's, that's like literally the premise of fucking U.S. exceptionalism. That's like, that's what that, that, that status mindset is. So stupid. Hey, who are the allies he's referring to? The only fucking people that Donald Trump is respected outside of like Duterte and fucking Kim Jong Un, which I think is kind of funny, and, and like all of these other uh, proto fascists like Erdogan as well. Um, like he he he's respected them, right? And historically, we've always done that, so that's not even new. But the only thing it got right was uh, saying like what the Republican perspective is that we like everything that Trump has done, but we don't like the way he's doing it. Um. Anyway. Astute observers have noted, though, that the rest of the administration is operating on another track, one where countries like Russia are called out for meddling and punished accordingly. Oh, I'm sorry. What the fuck have we punished Russia with? What kind of preventative measures have we taken to secure our, to secure our ballots? What kind of measures have we taken? We found out that there was uh, meddling. The only, the person that fucking, the person that busted that case wide open, reality winner, just got fucking... You just got hit with five years in prison for being a whistleblower, so fuck you. And then on top of that, what what are we done? What are we done? We we indicted what like 12, 12 Russian agents, that's it? The fuck is this shit? Like who is he writing this to? This is misinformation. Like this is blatant misinformation. One where countries like Russia are called out for meddling and punished accordingly, where allies around the world are engaged as peers rather than ridiculed as rivals. Oh, fucking bullshit. On Russia, for instance, the president was reluctant to expel so many of Mr. Putin's spies as punishment for the poisoning of a former Russian spy in Britain. Oh, He complained for weeks about senior staff members letting him get boxed into further confrontation with Russia, and he expressed frustration that the United States continued to impose sanctions on the country for its malign behavior. But his national security team knew better. Such actions had to be taken to hold Moscow accountable. This isn't the work of the so-called deep state. It's the work of the steady state. Oh, ugh, ugh. so fucking. I hate this. I hate this article so much. Given the instability many witnessed, there were early whispers within the cabinet of invoking the 25th Amendment, which would start a complex process for removing the president. But no one wanted to press precipitate a constitutional crisis yeah right republicans fucking love constitutional crises bro what the fuck are you talking about so we will do what we can to steer the administration in the right direction until 
one way or another, it's over. The bigger concern is not what Mr. Trump has done to the presidency, but rather what we as a nation have allowed him to do to us. We have sunk... Oh, and here it is, folks. Here it is. We have sunk low with him and allowed our discourse to be stripped of civility. There you have it. There you fucking have it. That's it. That's that's the that's the whole article. Civility, everybody. Let's go back to civility. That kind of normalcy, that fucking that that yearning for civility, guys, that's bullshit, okay? That's so that you can go back to fucking sleep. I wrote an entire article about this. I'm going to I'm going to see if that's still on here. Hold on. It's called Silver Linings of the Trump Presidency. Of course, it's going to be very difficult to find, and maybe they deleted it already, but... I wonder if they did. Oh, here it is. Trump's great. I think this was it. Yeah. That's what I wrote in October in, in October 2017. Trump's greatest strength now his biggest weakness. Well, originally it was the silver linings of the Trump presidency. Wrote on the HuffPo. But like Trump's greatest strength is brass, brash, attention-seeking rhetoric has now become his biggest weakness as it places undue focus on him and his government while pushing the ruling party into increased division and gridlock. This was, of course, uh, before the, the tax bill was fucking speared dick through, which, which ultimately kind of unified the Republicans. But the point I was trying to make is that... Um, the point I was trying to make there is that this is the silver, the silver lining of the Trump presidency is that so many people have fucking... have been forced to wake up to the negative realities. Maybe U.S. imperialism isn't going away anytime soon. Neither is institutional racism. But if we're desperately searching for a civil, li civil uh, lining, I have more than a few. For example, the world hasn't ended yet. Man, I write like such a fucking chode. This is actually making me feel kind of embarrassed reading my old writing. Jesus Christ, I'm so bad. Yeah. And now I'm, now I'm regretting that I turned this on. <laughs> Fuck. Shut up, everybody. Which means that Trump has shown us that America can indeed run on autopilot, at least for a while, despite a Republican-controlled Congress and White House, even when, or maybe because, they are all woefully incompetent. But while they're incapable of passing any serious legislation, at least we know we now know that the government still runs. Plus, the Republican Party's ineptitude is absolutely a good thing. And while Trump does his best to feed his weird, demented ego by hurling racial epithets from the bully pulpit, which probably isn't great for uniting this nation, Trump's big, stupid mouth has inspired a widespread movement of citizens operating as government watchdogs. So at the moment, activism is thriving in the U.S., even from unlikely allies. Our hashtag resistance is largely a coalition united against the rude and awful Trump presidency from Antifa juggalos to war criminals like George Bush, David Frum, or my personal favorite, Elliot Cohen, Eli Cohen, who might be the last person on Earth still claiming that the Iraq war was good and says even crazier things like, perhaps Al Gore would have also invaded Iraq. These men are now hailed as liberal darlings just because they've taken a mild-tempered stance against the most outwardly racist president in modern-day U.S. history. But I'll take support wherever I can get. This is... I can see why this could... I can see why this... Um, I read it later might make me feel better about my writing. Probably not. I don't listen to... <laughs> I'm having it. I just... <clears throat> the NFL protests are one example of such unification. Colin Kaepernick took a knee during the National Anthem more than a year ago to raise awareness about police discrimination and brutality. He was promptly blackballed and the conversation faded out. That is, until Trump took personal offense and decided to call these peaceful protesters exercising their First Amendment rights sons of bitches who needed to be fired. All of a sudden... And he's brave for that, guys. I'm just putting that out there. That's my perspective. What a brave guy. Um... Uh, 
All of a sudden, the movement reignited, and we witnessed NFL owners who gave money to the Trump campaign like Jerry Jones kneeling with players. Even though some of those who linked arms or knelt weren't protesting against racism, there was solidarity, strength in numbers. Trump inadvertently brought awareness to the issue. So as a result of the anti-Trump movement, people are more aware of the racist legacy of our institutions and the systemic corruption that exists in D.C., the turnstile between Wall Street, K Street, and The Hill. This I'll chalk up as a W. Politics might be the art of the possible, but in the U.S. oligarchy, what's possible is dictated by those who write legislation, our corporate benefactors. Now that we've woken up to the reality, to that reality, we are actively fighting against legislation that hurts Americans or even appointees we deem unfit to hold office. Man, I, man, this article slaps, dude. Who wrote this shit? Who wrote this? Fucking so good. So woke. So aware of all of the all of the real issues. This fucking slaps, dude. I'm giving you guys a real article instead. Instead of that shitty fucking fake article. Yeah. People talk about how insane it was that a healthcare repeal polling at 17% almost passed the supposedly sane Senate and tried to minimize that victory, but those cruel, nefariously written bills hit these record low approval ratings due to the media actually doing its job and also amazing work from activists. So while Trump's inability to comport himself in a remotely presidential manner proved an asset on the campaign trail, today it's actually hurting him because it places undue attention on the dealings of the White House. By the way, I still maintain this position. As the media and Americans focus on how he's saying things, they inadvertently end up actually picking up on what he's saying and why he's saying it. This is not useful for policy making, especially when the policies you're pursuing are widely unpopular. So while reporting on palace intrigue might be beneath some journalists, cough, Glenn Greenwald, cough, the ripple effect is that a lot, of, um, a lot more people in the margins have become interested in what's actually going on in our government. So yes, there's something to be hopeful about. Gulcifer, you, you call me a fucking uh, pessimist, but here I am reading an article where I right. slaps, if you mean slapping noise and me turning off my laptop, get good. Fuck off, space. Bitch. The opposite of this happened with coverage throughout the Obama presidency. While he was a historic once-in-a-lifetime president, Obama wasn't without fault, especially when it came to dealing with Wall Street. His appointee, Pri Barra, the now-famous hero of the hashtag resistance, absolutely failed, in parentheses, refused to prosecute Wall Street executives in the aftermath of the mortgage crisis. The lack of punitive measures was a crime in and of itself. This largely went unnoticed in the public eye despite our overwhelming coverage on the matter. Because Obama's greatest optics issue was his tan suit or his dad jeans. Optics can be incredibly powerful, and the Trump and Trump brought the Republican Party to heel with his mastery of reality TV distractions, but winning an election is very different than governing, as Trump's greatest strength has now become his biggest weakness. Dun 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 that's the name of the title too. Two hundred and thirty people read this. What a fucking what a mistake. So many Americans could have gotten more woke. We should be forcing my writing. Bitch 1v <laughs> PvP in journalism. Another thing GOP's thin-skinned idiocy isn't helping is the growing divide within the GOP, a Trump's thin-skinned idiocy, which now consists of establishment Republican cuck-servatives like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell, Tea Party nutjobs in the Freedom Caucus, nationalist Bannonite racists, supposedly moderate, sane people, a.k.a. women of the party along with retiring and or dying members like McCain or Corker. Haha! <laughs> Shots fired at John McCain. Just saying. Brah. Rest in peace, bitch. And finally, the one true maverick. Spaghetti-haired libertarian Rand Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Oh yeah, we are. We are. We are. Well, we're going to do it. By the way, guys, we have a special announcement. We're going to eat Bush Bash Zor. John McCain was not a good guy. You've, If you want to watch previous streams on the long history of John McCain and why he's an absolute piece of shit that was propped up by the media as a as an emblem for bipartisanship, this fake bipartisanship that isn't real, uh, you can watch that. Anyway. Um, 
This infighting is absolutely gridlocking Congress, which is a concern for the GOP donor class looking for a return on their investment in the form of tax cuts. Brah! And there's nothing wealthy GOP mega donors care about more than grifting the poor. So anything that gets in the way of their precious tax cuts is seen as a problem that needs to be eliminated. So the Republican Party fighting amongst itself is another silver lining. Back then I was hopeful that but this is before this is before the fucking uh, the tax cuts came. So you know, <laughs> a true American <laughs> John McDead burn got him. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the Bob Woodward shit. Yeah, I did. Um, overall, things are still very, very bad. But I guess what I'm saying is, at least we're united and more aware of the problems of our institutions than we've ever been. And the ruling party is failing to whip itself into shape while an absolute incompetent asshat makes the in that infinitely harder to achieve with his childish squabbles. So there is reason for hope. Until Trump tweets us into a nuclear holocaust, that is. There it up. There you go. That's a fucking. That's a real article right there. None of that fake shit. None of this like I'm a part of the resistance, man. I'm doing my best, man. Shut up, space. What's not clickbait? That's the ending. Well, it's supposed to be short. <laughs> Holocausts are okay if they're not. Yes, genocide is totally fine as long as it's not deemed racist in the aftermath. Journalism. I didn't go to journalism school. Oh, it is brooding. Yeah. Anyway, look. Oh, God. He's sucking off John McCain. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Everyone, everyone, we're going to finish this off, and then we're going to play the seduction game like John McCain seduced America. Like John McCain seduced his girlfriend that he ended up cheating on his disabled wife with. Um, that's what we're going <laughs> to... That's what we're going to play later. We're going to play Super Seduction number 2, or, or whatever the fuck that game is called. <laughs> Super Seducer 2. The, 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 the famous uh, PUA pickup artist game that is taking the internet by storm. I'm going to play the fuck out of it. My name is Keith. And you can't do anything about it. Especially after you gifted that, uh, that, that Saudi dude. No. John McCain's ex-wife uh, John McCain's ex -wife was disabled. She worked in the Reagan administration. And then once she was no longer useful to John McCain as a political tool, he cheated on her with a much younger, much wealthier uh, woman. And, and left her to take care of the fucking three children. Left them behind. <laughs> Gulcifer, this is not Cumbtown. You can't make these sort of jokes. Which I don't even know what Cumbtown is. She's a building match. Wait, what the fuck did Will say? Yes, yes, I know. Okay. Alright, I, I guess I'll take that name, Will. Um, okay, so, Will and I have a special, special thing for you guys tonight. You're, you, Will and I are, we're going to play characters, too, during the game. <laughs> Come Town is not for the, for, for those with a, with a weak digestive system, I'll say. It's bad for, oh, Jesus Christ. It's bad for the sake of being, it's like, it's bad for the sake of being bad. There will not be a dramatic reading. There will be... We're going to be seducing people. It's a bunch of comedy... It's a bunch of comedians who actually are fairly progressive uh, on almost every issue, but say the most anti-progressive shit. But that's not what the surprise is. The surprise is we're going to play... Uh, we're going to play Super Seducer as, as our characters, which I didn't spend a lot of time on developing so unfortunately will's character will be much nicer than mine but yeah we're gonna leave the stream in a second and our characters are gonna come back but let me finish this uh this is a game super seducer <sighs> let me finish this there's two more paragraphs left before i throw up 
Okay. Yeah, they're super socialist, but they say terrible things on purpose. The come town thing is, but the game I'm gonna play is is different than come town. For the record, I, I've never heard of come town before, but when I did hear it one time outside randomly, it, it penetrated my ears and I hated it. So if anyone asks you, does the Sam Piker listen to come town? You answer them no. He heard it on accident one time and he hated it. Um. Yeah, we're gonna play. We're gonna play the fucking incel pickup game of the of the century. Right. My friends, literally, the four of them held me down, got on top of me, and then they made me listen to this podcast, and I hated it. Damn, Sarah. Damn, Sarah. Your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Gameville. Okay. Senator John McCain put it best in his farewell letter. Letter: All Americans should heed his words and break free of the tribalism trap with the high aim of uniting through our shared values and love of this great nation. Like, what fucking shared values, dude? What shared values, bitch? Shut the fuck up. Like, what are the shared values? This is all... Wait, okay, space? How the fuck do I get the Battlefield 5 beta? If you can secure me the Battlefield 5 beta, then let's do it. Shut the fuck up. We can play Battlefield 5 beta? Oh, no. Will's going to be so upset at me. Will, are you still there? Oh, fuck me. All right, we're going to do both. We're going to do both. I might take a little pause. I'm going to text Will. I might take a little pause, raid Will for a second, um, while I while I get ready, and then and then eat, and then I'll also download Battlefield Five as well. Man, people in Twitter are just on PC. On PC, I'll play it on PC. Damn, Sandrock. Hell yeah. Young Turks, don't forget, membership is now the same price as the son subs on Twitch. If you can afford one, you can afford the other as well. Hell yeah. I'm going to retweet the shit out of that. I will be using a keyboard and mouse for Battlefield. Also, space. I haven't forgotten. I'm uh... a <laughs> space. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, space. By the way, your your photo was really funny. Uh, with the fucking, with the uh, with the uh, McCain Palin uh, Halloween costume. Respect. I gotta pre-order it. I mean, I might pre-order it. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it. Gang shit, dude. No, TYT's not on Twitch. No. No, it's just me. This is my private thing. This is like, that has nothing to do with TYT. Um. We may no longer have Senator McCain, but we will always have his example. A lodestar for res restoring honor to public life in our national dialogue. Mr. Trump may fear such honorable men, but we should revere them. Oh, God. Dude, the worst part about... The worst part about John McCain is that, like... The worst part about John McCain is that, like, they just won't let him die, dude. They just won't fucking let him die. Like, he's dead. Just give up. It's over. Like, seriously. They still gotta fucking reanimate his corpse every time to bring this, like, fake bipartisanship concept. 
There is a quiet resistance within the administration of people choosing to put country first, but the real difference will be made by everyday citizens riding above politics, reaching across the aisle, resolving to shed the labels in favor of a single one. Americans, yes. Communist revolution now. All right, done. Over. Um...